I've spent a good morning wading this, this the lakes bed predominantly. The end bed up there is completely empty, so I've just waded it, covered it, ready for some manure a bit later on. Um, what I've done and now I've waded, I've added a good top dressing of onion fertilizer. I'm going to water that in, recover it, then just leave them. Well, that looks a lot better, if I say so myself. It's amazing what a good weeding and watering does to a, a bed. It makes it look a lot better. This end bed here, as you can see, that's covered up now. And that's going to see me out for the winter. And I'll top dress it just before the start of the spring. Well, we're into October now. And I must say the weather's changed drastically. The last couple of days we've had tremendous rains, like monsoon. And uh, for me, the beds are starting to empty now, so as that creates spaces, I'm going to start to top dress the beds, and I've just had a delivery. This here is well rotted cow manure. There's another pile over the back there. I'm not sure how long this will take. So the ride hasn't helped, it does make it very, very heavy. And from here, right the way down to my pitch, down the bottom, it's a 200 metre round trip, and there's 80 or 90 barrel loads, I reckon, in that load. This is the first real dry spell we've had all day. It's 5.15 now, the day's gone. Clearing up some space, ready to put the cow manure in, and these courgettes are still actually producing. But We've had more than a fair share off here, so these are coming out. And this is the final crop. There was light starting, these were, but four planting. But when they did start, boy, did we get a good harvest of them. But next year, I think I'm going to cut it down to two plants. So the tidy up begins. These three beds here, I'm going to use as the initial storage for the cow manure delivery. There's 12 30 litre containers there. They've still got my sarpa mirroring and the plan is I'm going to put them the other side of the allium cage all in the line and just put a piece of polythene over the top just to keep most of the rain off. The rest of this thing can be cleaned up and we can start the big move. With me plans can change within seconds of the allotment. Initially I was going to put the potato containers along down this edge here, but I've got this bed here doing nothing. I've actually cleared it, covered it with black polythene. So I'm going to put the containers in there and then they're out the way. They're all tucked in there nicely. Put a couple of sheets of plastic on just to try and keep the rain off. Based on what we've had the last few days, it's been torrential and I want to keep them dry. I'll be taking them as and when required. So now it comes the job of clearing this lot. This here is the trailing edge of the onion squash, as I told it was. I'm not actually sure if it is onion squash. Anyway, I'm going to harvest it now. Oh. Right. There's a bit of white in there.
I'm just pulling the sweet corn up now. I've already had, had six and eight off my daughter, took them back to university. So these will probably end up in the freezer. There's about 28, 30 sweet corn in here. Probably had about half a dozen, 10 off already. And there was 18 plants in total. Variety is uh, incredible, the usual brand, and uh, probably should have picked these three or four weeks ago. The tassels have gone brown, some of the axles disappeared, but still looking nice. Return on them. This way, show you. Nice clean cobs. So this is one of the thicker ones. I think they're actually a bit smaller than usual, but I'll be happy with them. I'm just coming to get the courgettes out now. Let's take a look at these the stems on here. Now I've grown courgettes in the past, but I always grow them in pots. And they've been mediocre, but so this year I've had a tremendous crop and obviously that's the reason why. So I think that's the way forward to me in future with the courgettes straight into the ground. Well, can you believe it, eh? I've just been in the house to get a cup of coffee and while I was away, the allotment fair has paid me a visit. I'll just spin you around and have a look. That's the three beds empty now. Bit of hard work, especially getting the roots out of the sunflowers. they really deep, but uh, we got them in the end. This bed there, well all three beds there, really rich soil because the start of last year I actually filled this full of uh, horse manure and if you might remember I put the buckets of potatoes and planted the sunflowers in between. That's rotted down nicely so it will be ready for next year's crop. But I'm going to be using this as the main storage area for the horse manure as I bring it down on the plot and then I'll, I know it's moving twice but I'll actually then distribute it onto the beds as and when required. The pop problem is I've still got quite a few crops in that I could do with getting out. These, uh, these potatoes here, sorry, potatoes, uh, tomatoes, uh, most of them are going over now. I've had, I can't believe how much crops I've had off those, but there's still a lot of red and green. So I'll be going through them the next day or two and then take the plants out and be putting uh, more manure on here. The way that my allotment works, you may or may not know that I use a four bed rotation system. And it's a simple matter of each set of three beds moving up towards the camera each year. Now in this bed here, we're destined to have the parsnips, which are over there at the moment. Uh, we'll say I don't want to put the caiman directly onto the bed there because it'll make the soil too rich and obviously they could fork. So I'm going to put a sheet of black polythene down onto that bed before I actually load the manure on top. I've just put a brick on each corner to hold the plastic down while I've got a few loads dumped on there. Make life a bit easier. I've also put a couple of ramps just to get over the wooden edges and there's the first one leading in. So let's get started barrowing. That's me done for today. That's about 10 barrel lads there. It's a 120 litre barrel, so it's 1200 litres, give and take a uh, few. Weather's been kind, so I've been able to crack on. As you can see, it's filled one of the beds. Still plenty more to go. And it's nearly two and a half kilometres walk, <laughs> just believe it or not. But hopefully, tomorrow we should get those other two beds, well, definitely one, filled up as well. Just before I go, the last few days I've seen the video with the results of the Giant Sunflower Contest for 2020. And I was fortunate to win the category of the Sunflower with the largest head. Some marvellous, marvellous entries in there, especially the one in the container the tallest, way above the house, 
and I think Teddy's won the one with the sunflower display. If you haven't seen the video, go and take a look. And once again, many thanks to Nick at Nick's Allotment Diary for asking Nick. I think this is the fourth year, maybe fifth, he's done it. I know that I've been fortunate to win three times, so uh, hopefully, who knows for next year. So that's about it for this one. In the next one, which shouldn't be too long hopefully, I'll be doing the tour of the plot and I'll be re reviewing the crops which have come out, whether they've done good or bad. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye for now. <laughs>